Hi guys, welcome to Train Forever. I'm Andrew Barr and today we're talking about the best exercise for losing weight. It's not boot camp or circuit training or high intensity interval training or hot yoga or anything that probably comes to mind when you think about exercise for weight loss. But that's in large part because the way that exercise for weight loss is sold is completely backwards. What many fitness studios and boot camp style classes will focus on is that their workouts burn the most calories or burn the most calories per unit time or that they keep your metabolism elevated the most for a long period of time after the class is over. And the businesses behind these classes will then use that information to claim that their workouts are therefore the best for weight loss. Although these classes definitely do burn a lot of calories, this isn't actually how weight loss works. There's only one way that a person loses body fat and that is to sustain a caloric deficit for a long period of time. That's it, that's the one thing. What determines if you're in a caloric deficit is your energy balance or the relationship between your energy in versus energy out. Energy in is what you eat and drink, energy out is the energy that you expend, yes from exercise, but more importantly, simply through going through your day and powering your body through normal biology. Various environmental and biological factors influence both sides of this equation but since our discussion today is about exercise, we'll be focused on the energy out side of things. Exercise actually represents a very small percentage of the energy out side of the equation, otherwise known as total daily energy expenditure. This is something that is quite well understood in research, but not really widely known in the general public. So let's look at the four things that make up your total daily energy expenditure. The first and most important is called your basal metabolic rate, which is really the energy cost of keeping you alive. This is the functioning of organs, uh, maintaining consciousness, breathing, really just powering your body for continued existence. This makes up about 60 to 70 percent of your total daily uh, energy expenditure. The next category is called non-exercise activity thermogenesis or simply NEAT. This is the amount of energy that you burn from movement that isn't necessarily purposeful and certainly isn't exercise. Things like moving around the house, cooking dinner, uh, taking the stairs could count in this category. Uh, notably fidgeting, if you move around a lot at your desk, that can make a difference to your total daily energy expenditure and this gets categorized under NEAT. This represents about 20% of your total daily energy expenditure. Next we have the thermic effect of feeding. This is the amount of energy that is lost as heat when you eat food. Not all the calories that you consume are absorbed. Uh, proteins notably give off more heat than fat and carbohydrates, one of many reasons why protein is prioritized in most sensible weight loss plans. Lastly, we have exercise, which even if you do a hard workout, only accounts for about 10% of your total daily energy expenditure. Since exercise only makes up 10% of your total daily energy expenditure, it doesn't really make sense to choose or design a workout with the objective of burning as many calories as possible. Even if one activity burns 30 or even 50% more calories than some other activity, that's still only going to have a very small impact on your daily energy balance. In terms of weight loss, it's not worth it. You could argue that all else equal, why not optimize this piece of the equation? Why not get every little percent that we can in favor of that negative energy balance? Well, the fact is that these more intense activities that give us those superior calorie burn per unit time numbers also have costs too. So this brings us to the question, what is the best exercise for weight loss? Well, it's walking. Plain and simple, regular old, nothing fancy about it, walking. I know it might sound crazy, but it's true. So right now we're going to compare walking to some popular fitness classes and boot camps to understand why walking is the best choice. According to an interview with company representatives, a person uh, exercising at Orange Theory can expect to burn somewhere between 500 and 1,000 calories per 55 to 60 minute class. And a person exercising at F45 can expect to burn somewhere between 300 and 1,000 calories per 45 minute class. I asked a friend who goes to F45 regularly and she said that she averages about 500 calories burned per class. Now let's compare that to walking. An hour of walking will burn somewhere between 200 and 500 calories per hour, depending on things like how big a person you are, how fast you're walking, and if you're walking uphill. It's clear that the fitness classes 
vastly outperform walking by this measure of how many calories we burn per unit time. But it actually doesn't matter. Not when we zoom out and consider the whole picture. The more intense activities are harder on your joints. Injuries and burnout are more likely. It's more difficult to motivate yourself to go to a hard workout class if you've had a bad night's sleep or a tough day. Workout classes cost money. You have to show up at a particular time. You might even have to commute. Now, remember that the one way that we lose weight is to sustain a caloric deficit over a long period of time. With this in mind, it makes sense to sacrifice some intensity in the name of sustainability. Walking is free and you can do it anywhere. It's very easy to adjust the speed or duration of your walk to meet your present fitness level. It's also quite easy to make walking a part of your day. Perhaps you can walk to work. You can make phone calls while you walk, listen to music or a podcast. You can walk with a friend. With a simple mindset shift, most of the time, it's quite easy to make walking part of a routine, even for the busiest of individuals. Walking can also have a profound effect on mood, energy, and sleep quality. This is critical because real, healthy, successful weight loss almost necessitates making a few lifestyle changes beyond just exercise. And it's much easier to make those changes like prioritizing restful sleep, eating well, managing stress, things like that, if you're generally feeling good. Now, intense workout classes can also have these same positive effects on mood and energy, but oftentimes they're so demanding that participants feel run down and burnt out. And there's another issue with using high intensity exercise for weight loss, and that is that high intensity exercise is fueled by carbohydrate, by definition. This carbohydrate is most of the time supplied by glycogen stored in the muscle. When the workout is over, these stores need to be replenished. This is done by eating carbohydrate. This is completely fine, but the way that this usually works in practice is this is a new food requirement in addition to a person's normal eating routine. And in the absence of a targeted nutrition plan, it so often manifests as a craving, which results in unplanned eating and often overeating. So many times people who seek out intense exercise with the goal of losing weight end up gaining weight because of this process. Lower intensity activities like walking do not generally result in the same post-workout cravings and resulting overeating. Leave a comment and let me know if you agree or disagree or if you just have a question about training. I'll be happy to answer every one. The takeaway is that exercise is a very small part of the energy balance equation and that since the only way to lose weight is to sustain a caloric deficit over a long period of time, that prioritizing sustainability makes more sense than prioritizing intensity. Nothing is more sustainable than walking and given the fact that it is also accessible and fairly easy to do, it can free up both physical and mental energy to put into other pieces of the energy balance equation. Things like prioritizing sleep, managing stress, and eating nutritious food. Remember that there are a lot of different ways to make walking a part of your routine. And if you're just starting out, about as short as 10 minutes has been shown to have profound health effects. You can start with that and build from there. I hope you thought today's video was useful. And if you did, please give me a like and make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you never miss another training tip. I'll be putting out a new video each week to help you get the most out of your workouts and training sessions. If you head to the description, you can find my free guide to building core strength and strength training essentials and strength at home, two comprehensive workouts designed for beginners, one to be done in the gym, one at home, depending on what suits you best right now. And you can find more information about my online coaching too. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.